Hello, ladies and gentlemen of the internet. I'm Jack of All Trades here with a reaction to a YouTube video. Now, a while back on my MHA season four episode nineteen reaction, I got a comment from Kirby Sonic Team asking uh, for my thoughts on one of their videos. So I've decided that I would do a reaction to it, and I said, "Oh, I'll do it at the end of the season because that'll be a nice sort of recap. It's a character analysis breakdown of Overhaul." I thought that'd be a good capstone to the season, but a lot happened to the season, and Overhaul was sort of the focus of the first half. And then we got the Gentle Criminal stuff, we got the School Festival, we got Hawks and Endeavor and that big final fight. So it was not as fitting of a closure to the season as intended. Either way, I'm gonna dive right in and give my thoughts on this video. If you want to see their full video unedited, link to that will be in the description and the iCard, whichever corner that goes in. Three, two, one. My Hero Academia's Kai Chizaki, or Overhaul, is definitely the most polarizing villain in the MHA fandom. Initially, Overhaul was presented as a calm, intelligent, and charismatic villain with a cool gang of hardened thugs. However, at the turning point of the arc, the once experienced criminals started to act more like fodder for our heroes to squash, with Overhaul himself Fair. acting irrational and eccentric, shedding away any ominous presence he once had. Not only that, but Overhaul's grand plan for changing superhero society and taking away people's quirks started to directly contradict his later objective of wanting to repay the Yakuza boss. This video is meant to be a thorough exploration of Chizaki to help those like me, fans who are either confused or disappointed upon their first experience and would like to have a better understanding of- That's a very nice way to format your videos doing links to individual, individual sections. First, I want to address is overhaul the cool or not? personality and how it seems to contradict how he acts later in the story. Early on, Overhaul is presented as competent and menacing. His presence along with his charismatic design creates a stark contrast to the series' main antagonist, Tomura Shigaraki. Just as well, his brutalization yeah. of the League of Villains presents him and his men as worthy of respect. However, I think author Kohei Horikoshi may have done too good of a job at selling Overhaul's cool factor because viewers tend to forget. This scene also portrays Chizaki with the same eccentricities that he displays by the end of the arc. We see Overhaul freaking out over being touched, becoming yep. too emotional which causes him to lose focus on fighting, and showing genuine terror at the sight of Shigaraki's attacks. Even his men arrive too late to protect him, and one misses a shot that could have led to Overhaul's death and his men are shown to be nothing more than pawns ready to sacrifice themselves at a moment's notice. Hmm. With this one scene, Horikoshi- Which is a very cool thing in the show as well, that you have the thugs, just the basic Yakuza members, are like, oh yeah, we're doing what he says, because he will kill us if we don't. He can command a presence strong enough to lure a scared little girl back into his clutches. Oh, that scene still is hard. I've been working on some fan art at that moment. any more or less powerful, eccentric, charismatic, intelligent, or arrogant than he is by the end of the story. Part 1.2 was Overhaul born evil. Moving on, I want to briefly address a smaller concern about the presentation of Overhaul's character. Specifically, some may wonder, why is he so cruel? Our first look at Shizaki as a child presents him with a blank expression, with the rest of his face obscured except for his cold, emotionless eyes. Sometime later, we see Shizaki at what looks to be a daycare. Wish this moment was included in the anime. Play, ...reading medical books, while other children are playing and acting like kids, clearly showing the difference in personality and priorities even at such a young age. Combined with the fact that his quirk is one that defies pain and death, rendering them both as momentary problems, it makes sense that someone like Shizaki would lack empathy for others. Nothing he does has consequences due to his quirk, which allows him to shape reality to his whim and to go as far as he wants. With all that said, there is still some humanity buried deep within Shizaki, as he has one who he admires, respects, and dare I say, loves. Right. Okay, that makes sense. Because he still sets time aside to go and apologize for the noise that's about to happen when the fight starts. Part 2.1, Chizuki's Next, Warped like Compassion. Next, I would like relationship to the Yakuza boss, and how he truly seems to care about him, despite all the horrible things he's done to him and his granddaughter. As a child, Chizaki is picked up off the streets and given a home by the boss of the Yakuza. Unfortunately, Chizaki is not content to simply enjoy the boss as a surrogate father, but feels the need to repay him a life debt. Dare I say love for Pops? One example would be when Chizaki visits Pops at his sickbed and apologizes to him for the noise, something he did not have to do yeah. and served no benefit to him. He was simply concerned for his well-being. Hmm. Another example would be during his explanation of his plan. There are moments where Chizaki looks truly hurt and like he only wants to help. Ultimately, he is denied, and the expression he makes when the boss simply utters his name says it all. He almost looks like he could cry. 
As we know, Chizaki puts yeah. the boss into a coma, promising to revive him once the dirty work is done. But he shows no malice or hatred when doing so. Something he now can't do. He never shows any pleasure from harming or killing others. The only time he seems satisfied is when he takes Lemillion's quirk, but this has more to do with him proving his ideology rather than simply causing pain. He is willing to get his hands dirty for the sake of Pops. It's all worth it if he can just make him proud and repay his debt. While Overhaul is without a doubt the most despicable character in MHA, with the context of his relationship yeah. to Pops, his much-deserved comeuppance at the hands of the League of Villains begins to take on a much more depressing tone. At first, Overhaul shows no fear for his life, and barely even responds to the pain inflicted on him when Compress takes his arm. Only when his right hand is about to be taken does he react. Now quirkless, he is left strapped to a bed and stripped of his age. Because in that moment he realizes, Pops, one's gone, he'll never be able to show the bright future I can still fix promise. this. And whom he can now never revive. Other arms Without gone. Quirk, I can't do anything to terrible actions undo it. Tangible, permanent consequences. Yes, very good points. I, I didn't consider that. With nothing to do but cry out in agony and regret. Part two point two. The purpose of the eight bullets. Overhaul's okay. Top minions, Nemoto, claims that for things to go as planned, you must cast off your emotions. As warned by the Yakuza boss, Chizaki, in order to fulfill his plan, became a demon without a heart. However, the boss also warns that no one would follow such a person. Yet Overhaul has found at least eight people who are willing to serve him in his twisted goals. Mm -hmm. The original purpose of the eight bullets of the Hasaikai seemed to be as a way to give certain heroes, like Kirishima or Sun Eater, a fight that expressed that character's version of MHA's theme of what does it mean to be a hero. Yet, for some reason, Horikoshi was adamant about giving at least one villain from each of these encounters a backstory. For the longest time, I just didn't understand the point of giving them one. It just yeah. felt like a cheap way to make us care about villains who were only going to be Like, basically they all do, like, except from... Chizaki has the same affection for the boss as the eight bullets do for him. Is that the only backstory I don't know? <laughs> we learned that they were picked up by Overhaul when they were nothing, and then felt the need to repay him for his kindness. The three trash bullets mention Overhaul finding them on the streets mm -hmm. and giving them purpose, and Nemoto loves Overhaul and would die for him. Even Rappa has an attachment to Overhaul via a debt to be paid in a fight. In a twisted way, Overhaul, whether he realizes it or not, is imitating his relationship with the boss by creating microcosms of his own life with the eight bullets. His lack of purpose in life, desire for someone who cares for him, need to prove himself, the bullets that Horikoshi decides to focus on are the ways Chizaki probably feels about himself in relation to Pops. Of course the eight bullets would follow him. He saved them, just like how Chizaki feels he owes a life debt to the boss and must repay it to the best of his ability, even if he must do Good terrible point. things to accomplish it, and even if it costs him his life. Part 3.1, Arc Works the Disease. Before we get to our final topic of Overhaul's ideology, and how it all connects to the previously discussed topics, we need to establish where Chizaki first got the idea that quirks are a disease. As a child, Chizaki is seen reading about quirks and how they may have come from rats. The book states that there isn't really any solid proof for this theory, but Chizaki believes it anyway, as it was his first exposure to what quirks were. This theory yeah, and the rats the idea ties in with the plague being sped by the fleas on the rats, tied in with the plague doctor masks, and the effect it's had on it all comes together. That later, and disdain he has towards heroes and villains. To him, they are fake, and only think that they are special, that they can save anyone they want or take what they want, because they have quirks. This connects to his personality that that is what he thinks. Whatever he is first exposed to, like quirks. But it's also things. very much what also he's be doing. Chizaki's manipulation of Eri by convincing her that she is cursed. This idea was not something that Shizaki came up with, but actually from hearing that Eri's mom called her that before she left, implanting the idea in his head. Seeing the destruction that comes from Eri's quirk, something that he already believes are a disease, only validates his convictions that quirks are unnatural, or in Eri's case, cursed. Part 4.1, Overhaul's Twisted Ideology. Uh, Ideolo ideology. That being how Overhaul is simply a persona, a dark embodiment of his two designs. Okay. Those being to bring the Yakuza back to power and the destruction of Quirk Society, respectively. When some of Overhaul's men are captured, they mention how he took on the exact opposite values of the old boss, like working with villains and taking on villain names. You might think this is just Chizaki's nature. He wanted to become the new king of darkness and to destroy quirks, right? If we look at the story, there isn't a single time where Overhaul mentions the boss or bringing back the Yakuza to Shigaraki or the heroes. He only talks about breaking the foundations of the world. A society built on quirks has destroyed Chizaki's world and hurt the one person he truly cares about through means that he believes are unnatural and undeserved. 
When combined with his own germophobia, it's no wonder Chizaki hates quirks and sees their influence as confirmation that it creates a diseased way of thinking. Many wonder how Overhaul could want to destroy all quirks with the quirky racing bullets, but also be willing to sell a cure back to the heroes that would restore their powers. But that's the thing. Overhaul doesn't want to destroy all quirks, he wants the power to destroy all quirks, and to use said power as leverage over the entire globe. A worldwide quarantine where Overhaul can safely profit off the contaminated and their diseased thinking. Over and over again, Overhaul talks about hero syndrome, a mindset that turns schoolboys into thinking they are heroes, and a group of grown men with nothing better to do into thinking they are villains. With both yeah, he brings that up in his very Overhaul first introduction back in Season 3, actually, doesn't he? Uh, with the Reservoir Doll. A bunch of capable adults got together, and all they stole was a convenience store register? <laughs> this big a gang? They should have shot for a loftier goal. You guys aren't well. What you need is a cure. In this way, Overhaul's ambitions and goals are analogous to his quirk, destroying society to recreating it. All with the goal of once again putting the sacred title of the Yakuza above those fake heroes and villains that once plagued them. However, Chizaki isn't so delusional as to think the boss would approve of what he's doing, so for the greater good of the Shie Hisaikai, Overhaul becomes something dark and distant from his old self. If all goes according to plan and we make it big, I'll bring it all back. In another translation, he says he'll restore it all, which is the second part of his quirk, to destroy and restore. Chizaki doesn't want to end his overhaul, that's just the nasty painful part that must precede the healing when the Yakuza are back in power and the boss can be in charge again. Chizaki was only hurting people before overhaul can kill. Chizaki wants to help the boss, Overhaul wants to change the world. There's tons of proof of this new persona that is separate from his original self, like how he tells Mirio he has abandoned the name Chizaki and becomes furious as he continues to refer to him as such. We can also see a point. transition to preserve the past, Chizaki must, for a time... Engage. Interesting point, sort of separate those two personas, those two characters I suppose. What was that 4.2 where it all started for the split persona and that Chizaki only became a villain out of necessity after being defeated by Deku and Eri, Chizaki is actually the one who gains a power of love boost while writhing in filth blood and breaking out into hives as he screams in agony, mm. a moment that probably plays in his head over and over and over again. The praise he received as a boy from Pops after getting into a fight for protecting the honor of the Yakuza. But what was he protecting them from? From being called villains. But then he adds, you shouldn't have done it, but, Chizaki, thank you for protecting our honor. This one moment is the foundation from which Chizaki lives his life, and this conflicting message of rebuke for doing something dishonorable, but praise for his intentions, has over time been taken to its most cold, yet logical extremes. As Overhaul says, a fake hero is just mere sentimentalism given power, strength mm. given to those who think their emotions are important. The anime visualizes this perfectly, with Midoriya looking like an angry god ready to destroy Overhaul and everything he's worked to achieve. To Kai Chizaki, this is heroism. Part 5.1, conclusion, okay. Author Kohei Horikoshi does this kind of writing all the time. He gives you depth at a much later point in the story that makes you rethink everything you knew about a simple character. Mm. It's incredibly chilling to see the difference between a young Chizaki standing up for his father's honor to the snarling demon he has become all during his final act of resistance against a world that has clearly outgrown him. If you would like to watch more amazing videos, you won't find them here. Hmm. However, you can find them on the editor of this video's channel called Core. That's K-O-R. He does great analysis videos on anime that are both interesting to listen Go to. Go job to Core. Watch. If you're looking for more My Hero Academia content, then I would This wall is very well edited with all the images and everything, all the transitions. I did enjoy that. I'm probably going to check out more of his stuff in my own time. Them before they even say a word. With MAJ being used as one of the big three examples, it's how I found his channel and the interesting perspective along with the really good editing <laughs> makes it one of my favorite videos to this day. Check it out and show him some love. Links on screen and in the description. Same here, link on screen and in the description below as well to Quora's channel. Very good video. Again, I really liked the format of splitting up and giving the timestamps at the start, so if you wanted a specific part, you could go just straight to that, so that was nice. Quite a lot of good points that I hadn't considered. Um, a lot that I definitely didn't catch first time through, but I sort of clued on to when reading those chapters in the manga. I'd like to do more videos like that on this channel. 
doing some sort of character and story analysis and breakdowns myself. Uh, definitely on MHA, probably on Attack on Titan, a few other shows. Uh, yeah. So big thanks to Kirby Sonic Team for making that video and letting me react to it. Um, I implore you, if you found any of this interesting, check out the original video. Later today I will be uploading another video uh, that was filmed back before the lockdown and quarantine and travel restrictions and everything in the UK. It, it's, it's been a little while in the making, and I hope you enjoy that. Hope to see you there. Until next time, I've been Jack of All Trades. Bye.